The Model D Mini Moog is the instrument that really made popular the concept of the synthesizer. And what I'd like to do is just look at some of the similarities between the, the um, Model D Mini Moog and the uh, Mini Moog Voyager, which came out much later and represented uh, a whole new growth from the basic idea. Anyway, I'm setting up the, the Voyager and designed in, right now, it, it intentionally was uh, is set up to be fairly similar to the Mini Moog. And let's look at where that similarity is, because it's really a, a period of growth. Uh, when, uh, when Bob and I first designed the idea for what the synthesizer should be, it was designed with the idea that it would have oscillators a filter, an envelope generator. I won't go into the whole story of the envelope generator. It was uh, the second day that we were working uh, when uh, I said, you know, we need something to control the articulation of the instrument. Uh, the envelope generator, uh, basically, Bob said, oh, that's great. And he designed it in about a half an hour. Um, and uh, the story is, I've been told so many times, but maybe I'll just add it on, that uh, he said, go out and, and get me a, a doorbell from the hardware store. So I went out and got a 35 cent doorbell and he had already come up with the concept of an envelope generator so that when I pushed the button on the doorbell, that would be the trigger that would start the envelope generator working. And uh, that, so th these were all parts of the basic instrument and when they were put on, the Model D, they made the instrument light and portable and a single solo type instrument. Now, this is really where the Voyager came in. It is a growth from that into a much more sophisticated and much more magnificent musical instrument. Uh, basically, where it begins is that it has a series of oscillators, filters and, and an envelope generator, but it is a much more interesting approach to that. But the instrument has a set of presets and you can go from one to the other. This is synth world. Now I'm going to touch the filter and let's see what happens. Well, when I grab the filter, what happens is you get a reading in front of you. And the reading says, on this preset sound, the filter is set at a certain level. But you can change all that. See, I've taken the filter away from that particular sound. And of course, once you're on these preset sound, your mind is free. Your mind is free to just say, oh, that's a great sound. I like that. And then uh, again, you touch any control on it and you get a reading of where the sound is set so that you can, spending enough time, you can begin to get an idea of where your settings are on the keyboard. And of course, when you're performing, it's tempting uh, just to, uh, you know, uh, press buttons and see what they sound like. And I'm push buttons, pushing buttons right now and discovering it myself. To discover what makes this sound sound the way it does, if you're interested in the idea of synthesis, the, the first things that you would look at is, is well, th what, what's going on in there? Is there... Oh, I can even change it the way I could change any basic sound by adding modulation. And the, f the rate of the modulation, well, I just happened to touch the, the, uh, the rate control potentiometer and I've 
equal them completely. The way it says now, this is at a speed. Now I can slow that down. That was the sound that we heard. I'm holding one note down. But you notice here, of course, what's really changed is the speed of the modulation. And I'll go back to the sound that was built into the sequence, into the uh, patch. Well, that really is, in a nutshell, the growth of the instrument from the Minimoog Model D to the Voyager to the Minimoog Voyager when it first came out, clearly called the Minimoog Voyager. It's the travel of the Minimoog in time. Well, I hope that uh, my discovery of all this is of interest to you. It's of great interest to me because it just puts much of my life into a kind of a focus to today and today's use of the instruments.